Hello and welcome to Auto Shenanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Today I'm in Glasgow, which is in a faraway and scary land known as Scotland. I've come to explore the 37 mile long M74 motorway which saw its first section open in 1966 and its last section open in 2011, meaning the motorway was under construction for over 50 years. We start with the newest section of the M74 which opened in 2011 running between junctions 1 and 2A. This is most interesting. Due to the fact that it was recently constructed, we're able to look at historic satellite images and see how things looked before the M74 smashed its way through Glasgow from the M8 to Junction 2A. Before this new section was completed, Junction 2A as we know it used to be Junction 1 of the M74, but the junctions were renumbered following the construction of this new section. Just next to Junction 2A is where we find the Clybridge Steelworks, or at least what's left of the steelworks. The site opened in 1877 to manufacture large steel plates for use in shipbuilding, with Clybridge steel plates being used in the construction of the QE2 Ocean Liner. At its peak, the steelworks employed around 3,500 people, but by 2016 that number had dropped to 45. And today? Well, I'm not really sure. There were talks about building a hotel on the site, but that's been cancelled, and with the site owners struggling financially, luxury flats coming soon. The M74 actually runs right through the middle of the site, and on your left you might notice a small hill. It's actually a spoil mound which is made up of some of the remains of the old steelworks buildings. In the early 80s, elements of the site were closed and the buildings demolished, and at the time they just chucked all the rubbish and rubble to one side. The pile of rubbish and rubble is still here today, because they never got rid of it, and with nature taking over, you'd never know that underneath it was a load of old demolished buildings. Having crossed the River Clyde, we arrive at Junction 2A. Until 2011, the M74 terminated here at a roundabout style junction, and if we look at some old satellite images, we can see where some ghost slip roads were put in place in preparation for this extension, but of course today they've been fully utilised. Junction 3 features only a single set of slip roads, and usually we'd question this, but given the recent history of the M74, it's clear that the junction doesn't need the missing set of slip roads because the motorway terminated but a short distance away. Just after Junction 3, and the motorway passes these abandoned buildings, which are hiding in the bushes. I think it used to be part of an old farm, and speaking of old things, next door to the farm is where we find the site of an old coal mine. Kenmere Hill can trace its mining routes as far back as the 1850s. With coal demand in Glasgow at an all-time high, several coal mines were operated across the area. Today it's all gone with nothing more than open spaces where the collieries used to be. However, if you follow the old railway line that the M74 crosses over, you'll find the Westburn Viaduct. Once upon a time we'd have found trains toing and froing across the River Clyde, serving the nearby industries via the Carmel Goods Yard. The viaduct is the only reminder of the area's history, and it seems to have caused a few issues in more recent years where it's been used as access between two rival housing estates. Now I should point out, we're not in leafy Hertfordshire, we're in Glasgow, and they take their crime very seriously up here. In 2012, the local council reinforced the barriers and the gates on the bridge to prevent such access between the two housing estates due to the escalation of gang-related crime. Now I don't know if you can see it, maybe it's just off camera, but just here, there's a big hole in the fence because of course nothing gets through fences as well as local youths. On to junctions 3A and junctions 4, and these junctions are a little bit all over the place. Junction 3A, at first glance, seems to be missing a slip road that allows you to join the M74 eastbound. However, look to the other side of junction 4 and we find it right next to the A721. So is it junction 3A or junction 4? I suppose Junction 4 is really the interchange between the M73 and the M74, so it must be part of Junction 3A, but the layout doesn't really lend itself well to that. The Maryville Interchange, or Junction 4, has seen a few changes over the years. Originally, you would have found a 270 degree loop slip road that was installed as a temporary measure in 1968. This temporary measure was finally removed in 1993. In 2011, along with a new section of the M74 that was being constructed, they took the opportunity to rearrange Junction 4 by moving the linking slip road between the A721 and the M73 over to Junction 3A. Junction 5 is another junction that's seen a few changes over the years. It opened in 1966 as part of the first section of the M74 to open, which ran from here down to Junction 8. The M74 terminated here until 1968 when further extensions were added, taking the motorway up to Junction 4. It's interesting actually, because the OG M74 ran between today's Junction 4 and 8, and whilst it opened in the 1960s, it wouldn't be until the mid-1980s that further parts of the M74 were added, meaning for quite a while it wasn't really much of a motorway. In around 2016, improvement works began on Junction 5, which saw the connecting A725 rebuilt into a cutting and sent underneath the motorway. 
along with this, a nearby roundabout was removed and then the roads all connected up. Junction 6 to me is looking like a mighty fine junction. It's rather large and it's got slip roads for access in all directions and it's even got pedestrian access. Textbook. Unfortunately, the junction doesn't live up to its extravagant design because originally it was supposed to be a motorway to motorway interchange. Back in the day when road planners couldn't care less about anything, plans were devised up and down the country to build inner city motorways and vast amounts of connecting roads. Glasgow was no exception, and had things gone their way, well, take a look at this map and we can see what Glasgow might have looked like had it all been built. The blue lines are motorways, and don't get me wrong, I love a motorway, but this does seem a little bit excessive. Back to Junction 6, and it's easy to see how the A723 could have been a motorway. Had it been built to plan, it would have connected the M8 to the M77 via Junction 6 of the M74, serving as a bypass motorway for the south of Glasgow. If you're watching this from Glasgow, what do you reckon? Should they have built all the motorways, or is what we've got okay? Junction 9 is interesting. It seems to be nothing more than a slip road, and to understand why, we need to come back on ourselves a little bit to where the M74 crosses over Draffan Road. Until the mid-1980s, when the M74 would be extended, it terminated here at Draffan Road, and we would have found two looped slip roads. If you take a look on satellite images, you can just about make out one of the previous slip roads. So with the M74 terminating here at Draffan Road, from this point onwards, it became the A74, and it followed the route of the Junction 9 slip road to link up with Carlisle Road. When the M74 was extended further south, they converted the A74 into a motorway slip road to create Junction 9. At Junction 10, we can actually find a short piece of the original A74 that, after the motorway was constructed and the roads all realigned, fell into disuse. You'll find it just behind the Tesco Superstore, and have you noticed that we're missing a southbound exiting slip road at Junction 10? They didn't bother building it because Junction 9 takes care of things instead, and between the two junctions, you've got all the access you need. At Junction 12, there's a secret slip road that allows vehicles access to the northbound carriageway. Of course, today it's used by emergency vehicles or authorised vehicles, but I don't think it was built with that intention. You recall earlier that I mentioned the M74 was extended in the 80s, and that extension ran from Junction 9 down to here at Junction 12. It was a similar situation to Junction 9, where the M74 came to an end and the A74 took over. So for a while, the M74 terminated here at Junction 12, and I assume this slip road was originally built for all traffic. After Junction 12 is where we start to drive along another M74 extension, this time one that was completed in the mid-90s. And there's nothing here, it's just open countryside, and very nice it is too. So we arrive at Junction 13, where you'll find Abington Services, and it's at this point that the M74 ends and becomes the A74M. But why the number change? It's complicated. We need to consider that the A74 has been around for hundreds of years, probably, and in the 1960s it was mostly upgraded to a dual carriageway running from Gretna to Glasgow. By the 90s it was deemed no longer fit for purpose, and when they built the M74 extensions, they built the motorway along a different route rather than follow the route of the old A74. The section running north from Junction 13 onwards isn't an old upgraded A road and a newly built motorway on a different route and therefore is numbered the M74. The A74M running south of Junction 13 generally follows the route of the old A74 and thus gets the A74M designation. I suppose of course they could have easily numbered the whole thing as the M74 but they decided not to do that for some reason. It might be because it was supposed to be the M6 motorway. Yes, the M6, the one that you find in England. One of the original ideas was for the M6 to run all the way up to Glasgow, and on the M74 and A74's completion, it said that the road signs were all installed and printed with the M6 on them, and then later on covered with plates saying the A74M or M74. And there we are then, guys. That's all we've got time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, there is, of course, a button specifically for that. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. That would be wicked sweet awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you get up to. My name's John, you've been watching Auto Shenanigans, and I'll see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.